Hello there, welcome to the series of videos going through the content of A-level maths. Here we're looking at variable acceleration, so we can answer questions from exercise 11a. So in this uh, chapter here, we're looking at variable acceleration, which means that the amount that the acceleration can change by is a function of time. Okay, so where we usually would have acceleration is just a number in SUVAT, um, that no longer applies, and the, the acceleration changes as time goes on, as does the velocity, as does the distance travelled or the displacement. Okay, so in general, you can't use your SUVAT formulas in this chapter. We're going to look at a different set of rules that links displacement, velocity and acceleration. Okay, so um, if the acceleration of a moving particle is variable, then it changes with respect to time. So we're going to have a function of time for our acceleration, displacement or velocity. Now in this case here, we can have curvy velocity time graphs now. So in this case here, we have a, uh, a particle that's starting to accelerate uh, quite slowly, but by the time time has gone on, um, it's starting to accelerate more quickly. And in this case here, it's started by accelerating very quickly, and then it's come to more of a constant velocity once it's reached the end of that time period. So let's go through a few questions here. So a body uh, moves in a straight line such that the displacement s meters from the point O at time t is given by s equals 2t cubed minus 3t. So you see here how the displacement here is a function of time. That's what I mean. So uh, this is how we're now going to work out our displacement by substituting in values for t and that will tell us where our displacement is at that point in time. Part A is find the value of s when t equals 2, and part B is find the time taken for the body to return to 0. So, all we need to do for part A is just substitute in the number 2, and that will work out our displacement. So that's 10, so that's 10 metres. Remember here that displacement is just the difference between the starting point and the finishing point. It doesn't necessarily tell you how far the particle has travelled in total. Part B here is find the total time taken for the body to return to zero. Well, in this case here, if we want it to return to zero, or in other words, we want the difference between its starting position and finishing position to be zero, then S is equal to zero here. So substitute that in. And then do your little wonder with uh, algebra here. So factorise out T. We know that T is not going to be zero because we want it to return to zero. So take three on the other side half it and square root, and we get the square root of 3 over 2. Just the positive square root of 3 over 2, because we want to go forward in time rather than back in time. So round into three significant figures, that's 1.22 seconds. Okay, another question here then. A toy train leaves along a straight track, leaving the start... Um, of the track at t equals zero, it then returns to the start of the track. Uh, the distance s meters from the start of the track is modelled by this function here. So s equals 4t squared minus t cubed, where t is in between zero and four. Explain why there is time restriction on this model. Okay, well, since this track is straight uh, and this and the train starts at one end s, and we want s to be greater than or equal to zero, then the only time at which the time is greater than zero is when t is in between zero and four. If we have any restriction if we have any value of t outside of that four, then it's going to go backwards along the track, but given that the track says it's a straight track, um, and it leaves the start of the track at time t equals zero. We don't want it to go back because there's no track um, going backwards. Okay, another um, situation here. So we have a body moves in a straight line such that the velocity this time um, at t seconds is given by this expression with t. t is greater than or equal to zero. And we're asked to find the initial velocity the values of t when the body is at instantaneous rest, and the value of t when the velocity is 64 meters per second. 
So in this case here, we've seen previously displacement as a function of time. We can also have velocity as a function of time, or we can have acceleration as a function of time as well. And we'll see how they're linked in the next video. So uh, to answer part A, find the initial velocity. Well, that's when t equals zero. So substitute that in and we get v is 24 meters per second. Part B is find the value when the body is instantaneously at rest. That's when the velocity is equal to zero. So divide through by two and factorize. So we get t equals two or t equals six. Part C is to find the value of t when the velocity is 64. We'll substitute 64 in and subtract it, half both sides, factorize. And we get two solutions here, t equals 10 and t equals minus two, but seeing that t can only be a positive value, we're just gonna take the 10 second solution there. Find the greatest speed of the body in the interval from zero to five. Uh, okay, so you can use the information calculated already to draw yourself a sketch. So initially it's going to cross over at 24. When t equals 2, it's instantaneously at rest. When t equals 6, it's instantaneously at rest. And when t equals 10, um, we have a speed of 64. But that's not going to be useful for our t is in between 0 to 5. So this is what the uh, graph looks like here and 5 gets a cutoff point here. So it looks like the maximum velocity reached will be at 24 metres per second when t equals 0, and that will be the maximum speed of the body. OK then, so here are your two questions. Pause the video and try these two out. All right then, well done for having a go at these two questions here then. So, uh, particle P moves on the x-axis at time t seconds. The displacement in metres is given by this formula here. Find the change in displacement between t equals 2 and t equals 4. Well, the first thing we'll do is we'll substitute in 2 and we'll get uh, 5 times 4 is 20 minus 2 cubed is 8. So in this case here we're going to get 12 metres. And the displacement when t equals 4, that's going to be 16 times 5 is 80, take away 64. So that's going to be 16. So the change in displacement here is 4 metres. Part B here, find the change in displacement in the third second. Well, that's a bit strangely phrased question. So uh, the first second would be 0 to 1, the second second would be from 1 to 2, and the third second would be from 2 to 3. So what we need to work out is the difference between the third second displacement and the second second displacement. We've already got the second second, so let's do the third. So we've got 9 times 5 is 45, take away 27, and 45 take away 27 is 18. So 18 meters is the displacement at, S e at t equals 3. Now the difference here then, difference is going to be 18 take away 12 which is 6 meters. So there we are, whoops, 6 meters. Okay, question 3 then. A particle moves in a straight line such that its velocity v is given by this formula here. Uh, find the velocity of the particle when t equals 1. Well, let's just substitute 1 into the formula here. So we're going to get v of 1 is equal to 3 plus 5 minus 1, which will give me 8, 7. 7 meters per second. Part b here is find the velocity of the particle when t equals 7 and describe the direction of motion of the particle at this time. So v of 7 is going to be 3 plus 5 times 3 is 35 minus 7 cubed. 7 uh, times 7 times 7 is 343. So that's going to be a big negative value here. And doing the subtraction on that, so 33 plus 35 minus answer negative 305. So, the direction of motion will have changed. Direction 
of motion has changed with a speed of 305 meters per second. Okay. All right then, so that's the first uh, sample of questions from exercise 11a. Do carry on with that exercise. It does get a lot more challenging later on. Do have a go at those later ones that, that really do challenge you. Okay, persevere through those difficult ones. Ask your teacher for help if you need any. And thanks very much for watching. Thank <laughs> you.